Good morning, Dr. Jan. How are you, my friend? I'm fine, Steve. It's nice to be with you as always. So good to have you back. And we're going to jump right in. Well, we got a little bit to a late start. You and I were actually talking and, and, and going over the notes. And all of a sudden, I looked at the clock and it was eight after. So my apologies uh, for, for letting that go. So but here we are. I want to jump right in, Dr. Jan. And there's a video that we're going to play with uh, Jerome Kersey. Do you want to talk about who he is? And then we'll play the clip. It's a longer clip, eight plus minutes. Uh, but it is so important to show this. So talk about that just for a minute. Jerome Corsi has been part of Donald Trump's inner circle for between 30 and 40 years. Whoa. And Whoa. so he, and he is very, very well known. Um, he has been an advisor. He has also been, he's regarded as a conspiracy theorist because he did do some work for, um, uh, Alex Jones's Infowars, uh, but he has been a very important voice. One of the interesting things is that he's also closely connected to Roger Stone, and his name came up during the Mueller investigation, but no charges were filed against Jerome Corsi, but they were against Roger Stone. And the claim was that it was Corsi that told Roger Stone that um, Julian Assange at WikiLeaks was publishing all of that information, oh, but wow. they could never prove it. They could never prove it. But out of all the people that got sent to jail or had to defend themselves, Jerome Corsi was not one of them. That's good news. Well, this is going to be self-explanatory when you see what he says. So we're going to go ahead and play that. And as I said, this is longer than most videos we play, almost nine minutes, I think it is. But uh, you're going to be amazed at what you what you hear. And it'll tell you'll be able to tell by the things he says about what what time period this was when he said it. So watch that. Here we go with that. Such a good news expose or or description of of, of the battle. I, the one thing that just made me just glow with happiness is that statement that he's known Trump for all these decades, and Trump always looks like he's losing right up into the moment when he wins. You know, most of us want to look good all the way along, right? So that they'll see we're winning uh, in whatever our battle is. But Trump doesn't seem to care if he looks like he's losing. In fact, he relishes that, doesn't he? Oh, he does. And, and as Erica posted, the art of war. And he is, he knows that every business type transaction that you have to play the game of it. And if you play it well, then both sides can end up winning. But there's also, you have to show your vulnerability and your weaknesses because that is when you're not pushing against the other person. So their resistance goes down. And then you have a better way of getting in. But he does. He Just like I can always count on Nancy Pelosi to always fail, I can count on Donald Trump to always succeed. Yeah, it's like he's got a, if I could use a hyperbole, he's got a flaw, and that is he never, never fails. It's like he just looks like he's going to fail. He looks like he lost the election. Then he looks like he lost the next one, which is a really interesting thing because they, he said, Trump always said, and we're going to play a clip in a few minutes where he says we're not going to let them uh, win again, but he said that at the midterms, and then they won again. And uh, and I'm thinking, why is President Trump, I mean, I'd like to call him my friend, I've never met him, but why did he say they're never going to do this to us again, and then the midterms, they did it to us again? What I was told was that they had to get the low-hanging fruit. They had already gotten the upper crust, and then they had to get it down at the local level to figure out really where the rest of the corruption was. Is it that a whole bunch, you know, I don't know, you've probably heard, uh, I haven't asked you this and it's not in our notes, there's supposedly all of these uh, sealed indictments by the many, many, many thousands. Have you heard about these? Oh. Yeah, talk about that or whatever you might know. Originally, or... originally there were approximately 250,000 sealed <laughs> indictments. And they've been knocking them out. You know, as I've said, there have been 
military tribunals off the coast of Australia, off the coast of Japan, off of the Mediterranean coast, off of uh, Southampton there, where the was, Titanic took off. So these are like all on military ships? There were these all tribunals? on military ships because wow. the Navy, the Navy, the JAG officers are the ones that are taking care of it. In the military, they handle the legal. So wow. we can trust them to be able to take care of this. And then the number ended up going much higher really? because, well, because then people want to save themselves. So they implicate others. And so it's not just, okay, we've got this indictment and nothing is going to spring off of it. There could be 10 more indictments that can come off of base the information that you get from one person. So, um, yeah, it, it's it's still up there in the very, very big numbers. Well, there was someone, I don't know the person's name, but he was on Nino's the other the other night, and he said, oh, they're all done. And I, I just, Steve, I cannot tell you how much it grates me when people act as if they know and they give the wrong information. They are not done. This is going to be going on into 2025. You do not know how many corrupt people um, that they have to take care of. Too bad it can't be a firing squad and get them all to line up and go boom, 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 boom. But do you believe uh, or no, whichever way you want to say that, that held in a cell? Okay. But thousands and thousands, and in this case, hundreds of thousands. Yes. What about well, this idea that the guy, that um, Jerome Corsi was talking about? All of these things were CIA founded, including uh, Twitter and Facebook. Um, but uh, I guess, uh, and I, I keep trying to figure out, because as far as I'm concerned, um, I can't think of his name all of a sudden, Elon Musk is a good guy, a white hat now, unless he's been uh, cornered and now he's working for the white hats. What, what are your thoughts about that? You know, I, I don't know. And I, Steve, I tend, to um, pa I, I avoid making any judgment yeah. when I don't know, because I really don't want to mislead anyone. If we look at Elon Musk's behavior, what he has done by buying Twitter, he has opened up communication for us. So I prefer to look at the actions yeah. that the people are taking and are they contributing? Are they adding value? to us or on the evil side, are they hurting themselves and us? So okay. at least for me, the fact what Elon Musk has done um, with Twitter, firing a good third of the staff, I mean, why it, these companies just work creates itself and it rarely has to do with the bottom line or yeah. taking care of the customer. Yeah, boy, that, don't I know that? Uh, okay, there you wanted to talk about this, and because uh, and we've actually hit this a few times, but it needs to be hit again. The rumors were or have been, and you can name names or not name names at your at your pleasure. But so the, one of the rumors was until we hit about eighty two percent awakeness, eighty two percent then the military could step in or then Trump could come back. And what, what, what you had some strong feelings about what those rumors yes. and all that. So to right. go ahead. I, I'm, I'm, um, it is a misconception to think that if somehow um, we could even just say my task force suddenly measures and says, oh, guess what? We think that it's about 82% of the people that are awake now. That has nothing to do with whether the military is going to decide to um, do an about face and be public or if they're going to continue to work behind the scenes. So it, it has been such a misnomer. And, and I know Juan O'Savin, um, who I, I have the utmost respect for, but what struck me was that he kept saying, oh, it has to get over 80% or like at 68 or blah, blah, blah. And then suddenly he's saying 82%. No, where that came from 
was that there was a poll. And in that poll, and I, I want to look because I want to make sure that I've got the stats right, is that 82% of the Fox viewers and the 97% of OAN, we are at about 33%. Really? I would have thought yes. it was much higher than that. Well, uh, that is one of the indicators that helps us understand the level of awakeness or lack of yeah. awakeness. Well, because I, you know, I, I, for the two, three years we've been at this, I keep, I would say over and over and have said, continue to say, man, I thought I was awake two years ago. Now I thought I was awake one year. I think I'm awake today. But the reality is, however that's defined, compared to the knowledge that's out there, I might still be asleep. I don't know. Because there's so many things that I don't know yet. Well, exactly. And the thing is that each and every day we become more aware. But what I also find myself doing is looking back on the way that I interpreted or understood something. And now with my new knowledge, I think, how could I have ever thought that in the past? So, because uh, one of the things I'm most concerned about is that we basically have been living in an everyday psyop. You know, there's psychological warfare, and that's very strategic and very important. But we live, and, and I know on Twitter, people use the word psyop and stuff. It's an everyday psyop between advertising, between marketing, between messages of how to behave, whether norms that we have to abide by, whether how we should dress or what we should do, all of that has a bearing on us. And really what part of being awake is, is when you feel comfortable in being true to yourself and you truly do not give the scorecard to other people, but you're also aligned in faith with God because that is really, really important. And you have to have faith in yourself and you have to believe in yourself because that is the only way that you really can trust yourself to believe that there is a God. Yeah. What do you think the danger is, if danger is not an overstatement, if it is or isn't, you can, of, of thinking or feeling or hoping that when we get to a certain amount, a percentage of being awake, then the military can step in. Talk about that. In Where are we with all of that? Well, uh, the, the main worry um, and why they are monitoring whether people are aware. Russell Brand uh, did a podcast recently, and he said, more and more people are awake. Hey, CNN, people don't trust you anymore. Hey, MSNBC, people <laughs> don't trust you anymore. So what we have to be patient about is that think about these people that have believed everything trusted what they were told and suddenly realized, oh my gosh, it wasn't true. It was a big con job. It was just to try to get me to just fall in line and not think for myself. So that has been, for me, one of the things that I really look for is kind of like people just finally opened their eyes, like, you know, a baby comes out and you know, opens their eyes and they kind of look around. And we have to be very sensitive about that. You know, I was with a friend the other day and she was all angry because she's been a truther for like 30 years. And, um, and she was angry at people, like, just get with it. And I said, uh, first off, that is a waste of emotion for you. Yeah, it is. While it is. you are getting angry with people you don't even know, you could be using that energy for your creativity, for meditating, for doing reading a book, but it is not worth it. It, it I, I just it doesn't pay to judge other people. And those yeah. very, very judgmental people. That is how they treat themselves as well. 
you know, and you're so right on that. I, I can't even put it. Um, a check mark on you are so right because judging requires so much emotional and physical, even physical energy is consumed when you're judging. I mean, your brain, your spirit, your soul, everything's engaged against this person because you've got a judgmental heart and attitude. I don't know. That's like, you're right. It consumes energy that you don't need to be consuming because it doesn't, it's the same thing as where Jesus says, why do you worry? You can't even add a hair or a day of life. You know, why do you worry? Even the, even the heathen worry about things that they can't control, you know? So. Right. Yeah. I was telling my niece, cause she was all worried um, about this. One of her final exams. And I said, okay, you have a choice. Part of you can be worrying and part of you could be responding to the test. Now, the problem is if you're focusing on worrying, then you're not going to be able to recall the information. Yeah. So what does it matter? You're either going to pass or you're not. You're either going to get the grade that you want or not. But the most important thing is that as long as you are focused on that information and you just do your best, then you're not going to be distracted by other emotions and things that take you away from it. So good. So, I was yeah. um, last night in prayer. I was awake for a few hours, and which is not uncommon for me. So I decided to go into prayer because what else are you going to do, right? So I'm praying. And I was saying to the Lord, you know, why is it that so many people, including myself at times where the scripture says, cast your care on the on him, he'll care for you. And there's a couple of versions of it. I think that one might be in Lamentations or Ecclesiastes, mm -hmm. one of those. And uh, I said, well, why, if it says cast your care and then he'll take care of it is what the point is, why does it seem to not work? And he said, because most people will well-meaningly cast their care on me, get up from their knees or get up from their prayer, and five minutes later go right back and pick it up and carry it around with them the whole day when they were supposed to cast it and leave it. But yes. they don't leave it, and we all know that one because we'll all even get to in a group maybe even sometimes and pray about something, and then the, the group prayer is over, and then we go, man, now what am I going to do? Wait. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but we all know that one. That's why we're laughing, because we do that. Right. Know. Well, and we can have some resentments, and we hold on to those resentments. And it's really important um, to look at, is it serving us to feel resentful? Yeah. I, mean, I, 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 I have told people for years and years and years, there is no use in having a revengeful thought that's good it, that person will get it in god's time not in your time but in god's time and it will come and you just have to understand that it is in god's time and when there was this big thing with cambridge analytica which um had to do with uh it was the consulting firm that ted cruz used and they had facebook information and I had actually fired Cambridge Analytica when I was running um, uh, Republicans overseas. And I, I fired them because the CEO who begged for our business then was late on something. And he had the nerve to say to me, well, you're not one of our highest paying clients, Jan. You'll just have to wait. And I was like, that's it. Done. I'm done with you. But... Then, uh, one, two, three, four, uh, about three years later, four years later, I'm listening to the news. Alexander Nix has been fired as chairman of Cambridge Analytica. I said, oh, God, thank you. Thank you. You know, it, it, it and, and then you I didn't have to be resentful towards him. It's just that God took care of it, and then I could be so grateful. Exactly. You know, I had, this is 25 years ago, 
So no names, but I uh, I got uh, effectively booted out of a church. And why? Because I started the Elijah list. It was started as the Elijah list. And they said, you can't do that. Um, because if you do, it, then I was prophesying to people on tape. I was the early adopter of all of that stuff. Mm. And they said, you can't do that and still be on. I was actually a pastor there. And they removed me. And I had two home groups and groups. And they removed me because I was doing that. And so we finally left. Because uh, they said you can, we're not kicking you out, but you can't do anything when you're here. So I, I they said, what are you going to do? And I said, I'm, I'm leaving. Why would I stay here? And so that was that. But you know, there was a lot of wounds. And then about that time, Graham Cook was out teaching uh, about God vindicating you. But his overall approach was that God, uh, God's not interested in vindicating you. Or at least that's the message I got. Uh, and so I thought, okay, let God do it. Vengeance is mine. I didn't wish vengeance. Don't get me wrong. I, I was really obedient in that thing. I was not going to allow vengeance, but it took years uh, and things got played out. But I kept saying, Graham said, God's not going to, God's not going to, um, God's going to vindicate, vindicate you. Or no, he said God's not interested in vindicating. vindicating. Right. Okay. So, and it was kind of, even then it was confusing my, my head. Well, a few years down the road, uh, one of the two parties came to one of our big conferences, which was a couple hours away. Now, we, we had just exploded with the Elijah list after we were booted. That's when we grew. And so I just kept to, to myself, never spoke against them, still don't. But I'm telling the, the generic story of it. And, and so then I called. Uh, so then this one of the two parties came and went to the conference. And the wife said, Steve, we can tell God is with you. And that was so sweet in, in my, in, as far as healing. And it was very nice of her to say that. It just did all this healing. And I called Graham. I said, Graham, you said God wasn't interested in, I thought you said God wasn't interested in vindicating you. And he said, I didn't say God wasn't interested. I said, that's not his primary focus. <laughs> and so it was like, you know, you have to process uh, process these and you hear what you hear but the bottom line is what you just said what i just said is let god be true and every man a liar get to work stop eating up energy wanting yes. to be either vindicated or proven right or see that the other person was so sorry for what he had done i mean it's god's it just is wasted thrown away energy Exactly. And it's exhausting and it's stressful. And it's the same thing as I keep getting, um, whether it's LinkedIn or DMs about people, when is something going to happen? It has to happen tomorrow. It should have been happening, blah, blah, blah. And I'm at the point when I get these that I now say, are you an adult or are you a child? <laughs> That's good. Because the child in us wants everything now but do you want it done right or do you want it done fast and we want it done right and you've got it's not just seven years people it's not just seven years even it's 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 centuries but just go back to jfk so it's at least 60 years yeah you know, when he wanted to expose, he started it, and Trump is going to be the finisher. That's good. That's good. Hey, talk about that some more. Um, you really believe that Trump has been called, really, by God to step yes. in and finish what JFK Sr. never did. Well, you know, it was interesting it's because funny, guess, yeah. when, when Trump first came about, there were so many people saying he's been sent by God. And it never doubted in my mind. I mean, I had always wanted a business person instead of these lawyers that run our government. Yeah. Um, but I, uh, and you know, and people have been critical of him, uh, but he's a spiritual guy in his own way. Very much is, isn't he? You know, and, and, uh, once again, don't judge him by your norm or how you define being spiritual or religious. Accept the fact that he's got his own definition 
but he's definitely there. But you remember that 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 very famous scene? He's where he's holding. He walks across the the quadrangle, whatever they call that area, the ellipse area, and he goes to this church and says, "This is our stand." And he holds up a Bible, and there was this feeling in a moment as he, it was a prop, and it looked like a little bit of a prop. And people just got all over him for that negativity. But think of this. He took the Bible on purpose when he had a choice not to and said, this is what we're going to go by. And yes, it, yes, it exactly. Like, so what, show me a president, former or, you know, former president or current president who has ever done that, that in, in, in modern time. We're going to go by this. It was such a beautiful moment. Can you imagine if you're God in heaven going, that's my son right there. And, and then, of course, the military guys that followed him then apologized for doing so. Yeah, and, then, and then, oh, my goodness, he had the Bible backwards or upside down, and everyone's criticizing him for that. See, that is an example of such wasted even thinking and energy and to get all worked up about it just because yeah. you want to criticize him what value does it add to your life doing yeah. that um let's talk again about uh, or a little more about is there a concern among the military or trump or both or all of the above that if we're not careful uh yes so, okay. so a year before 2020, the Democrats started saying, well, if Trump loses, he's not going to leave the White House. Yeah. Well, he knew he was going to leave. He knew what was going on. But let's just say he wanted at that point to have the military show all the goods I mean, because if they can track everything that we do, as Corsi said, please. But if he had presented it, it would have been spun that he wouldn't leave. He's being a dictator. It would have been all the negative. Yeah. And it wouldn't have made the point. What it would have done at that moment, we would have had, BLM riots probably times 10. Yeah. Um, now, one of the turning points is that if people that is positive because their mind is starting to open up and nice. they're starting to see things. But we have to really, I mean, I even know for me that sometimes I get a realization and I kind of, I feel this whole sense across my body. Like, how could I have not seen that before? Or I kind of feel like my eyes opened up yeah. just a bit more. Yeah. Um, and and those in, in the world of psychology, we call them aha moments. Yeah. Aha, aha. You know, and those are really important because that's when we're really taking it in. Um, and it means we've got it. We're there. But how many things, if we look, if, if I put a checklist together of what people would have to realize to become awake, um, it really might be about a 300-page book. <laughs> you know, when you think about it, you know, what, what, what commercials? I, I remember my son, when he was three and a half, came running into me, repeating every bit of a commercial. And I thought, oh. Really? Three and oh, and yeah. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, every bit of it, I thought. Uh, you know, and, and I, I, in my early career, had done the advertising for Johnson Baby sh Shampoo and Disposable Diapers. Yeah. So I have some respect for a bit of advertising and marketing. Um, yeah. But uh, um, so, you know, Steve, 
while we're talking about this and we were talking about judgment, it might be a good time to show the scripture because the point oh, that, that yeah. we want to get across to people is that to judge others, to gossip about others, just ask yourself, is that adding value to my life? Yeah. Well, let's go ahead and show that. Uh, there okay. it is. Okay. Go ahead and read that. Who is the man who desires life and loves length of days that he may see good? Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking deceit. Wow. And you know what? I... I've I've had a certain collection. I haven't actually put it down on paper, but it's in my mind of all the times God says, if you want to have length of days, long life. And there are certain, this is not the only one that says, if you want to have long life, there's another, there are others too, but, oh, many. The, but, the, yes. but keep your tongue. First one's the tongue, you know, the tongue, second one's the lip, lips. And the point that you're making, and I want to triple make it with you is, he means what he says. Do you want to live long? Length of days means you're healthy and you yeah. live long. You can't live long if you're not healthy. If you want to be healthy and live long, keep your tongue from evil. And I mean, if people really understood that God actually really wasn't lying, he actually told you in black and white what, what would give you health and long life. There it is. Yes. It's you. Yeah. And, you know, if think about it this way, you have sometime in your life, you've walked into a room and you just got a bad vibe from yeah. somebody. Yeah. That that was real. That's negative energy coming. So your thoughts, if you're being negative, that's what you're carrying around with you. It's like an albatross around your neck. Or it's emotional baggage in the backpack that's just, you know, hunching you over. You know, let it, it's, it sometimes is difficult to let it go. And sometimes it isn't difficult. All it means is spending a little time thinking about it, challenging it, and deciding how important it is to continue to think or feel that way. That's so good. So good. So good. Um, where do we want to go? There's different things. We talked about the military accountability. There's a letter that was, the, the letters are too small for us to show. Talk about these 231 military people that, that created this letter. Talk and what that all um, means. 231. Um, you can go to on uh, X, it's Brad Miller 1010. Let's go ahead and, and put that up here, you guys. Um, um, and he, you can find him, and or you can go to the military account accountability. There it is. dot com and uh, dot net, and you can sign the petition. What they did was they signed a letter, and they dealt with the issue of the military. But what this did was it triggered off and they've named names of the top military in the letter that the court martials are starting. Now, what is good about the court martial starting? It means we're getting closer to maybe some public military tribunals. That's really, really good. That's really, really good. But do uh, check out the letter. When Check you out. say, uh, excuse me, I, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Uh, when when you say closer to public, you're not saying it's military tribunals that are going to start. You're saying they will have reached a point that it's time for the, they now believe, would, would it be okay, accurate to say now they believe the public can now handle public tribunals? What, how, how would yes. you word that? Yes, yes. That's a very good way of putting it, that, yeah. that they... They won't freak people out. They're still going to freak some out, you know, yeah. and it's not going to be easy. I, I don't think we'll ever see a firing squad um, yeah. relayed to us in any way. But the fact is that, yes, military tribunals are going on nonstop. 
but not made public. They are waiting for those tribunals at the right time to parade some of the people. But you know, you also said, uh, or Jerome Corsi uh, had said that, who are the real people that run Silicon Valley? Like Larry Ellison. No. Um, and those are, he's just not interested in being in the news all the time like Mark Zuckerberg. Mark Zuckerberg, yes, the social network was a nice movie and it claimed that Zuckerberg stole it from two other colleagues at Harvard and he created Facebook all by himself. No, he got very, very lucky to be given it. So that was you know, you know, the whole story. I love that movie. I didn't realize at the time I was watching it that the whole thing was made up. Yes. It's a big yes. con and, is what it is. Right. And one more psyop. How many of us have believed that, oh, Mark Zuckerberg was just one of those ingenious, um, intelligent geeks that came up with this? No, no. I mean, literally it had been in the making and how else could the cia get all of our data all of our information yeah and you know how come we always still have security problems oh because then they want us to change our password or then they want us to give another email address or an additional phone number it's a con job get more and more into our lives. Wow, wow. Okay, now we wanted to talk about today, um, as we're getting close to our time here, um, you are on the task force where you're, you're seeing, part of your job is, a psych, is the psychology of everything. You're seeing, I think you would say, really good people who are all white hats, they're all patriots, and there's a whole bunch of infighting going on among them. What's that about? Well, um, actually, my role on the task force has expanded. Oh, okay. In that, well, in that, um, I used to just focus on Truth and Twitter and LinkedIn, and now I get everyone's summaries um, on. Uh, thank goodness, not on a daily basis, or I'd be overwhelmed. <laughs> yeah, I would but, think. But they summarize things at the end of um, a seven to 10 day period. And I am looking at it so that um, it is a different way of taking the temperature. Yeah. Because are there certain themes going on within people's minds in that and it could be on Getter, it could be on any of them, because I get, now I get all of that information or summary of it. Yeah. Um, but is that going on and what, what are the actions? So for example, there are so many people who feel they have to say, well, I haven't always been this godly. I did bad things in the past. Mm. We all have. Yeah. We all have. I have never cottoned to when someone says we're all sinners. Um, because if you go around, I'm a sinner, I'm a sinner. You know, it, it weighs on you. But we are not perfect human beings. And we all have sinned and will sin again. Yeah. And that right. is part of our growth. Yeah. So um, that has been something that I've been concerned about and wanting to talk about more openly and let people know you got to forgive yourself. Yeah. You know, I mean, you don't have to justify. Are you keeping that list of everything you felt you did wrong? Yeah. And, you know, that is holding you back. Just if we can learn to forgive ourselves, and we have to forgive ourselves, maybe not on a daily basis, but you know, frequently, because we're not yeah. perfect human beings. 
Yeah, and I think there's this thing where um, there was way too much uh, pointing, finger pointing going on where we don't uh, we don't look at ourselves, but we look at the other guy and say, he did this, he did that. Or, or even a bigger thing that I'm observing is everybody, you know, you talk about these measuring contests that men have. Well, this is how about an intelligence measuring contest? My intelligence is better than your intelligence. I mean, they're talking about like military intelligence, reset intelligence, banking intelligence, redemption uh, plan intelligence. There's just all of these things and everybody's measuring the information, the inside information they have and they're criticizing each other publicly by basically saying my intelligence is better than your intelligence. Is that what you're, right. are you seeing that too? Oh, oh, definitely. Ego, I know better. I've been around longer. Yeah. How does that person have a right to be saying that and get any attention for yeah. saying it? Yes, there, there is all of that going on. <laughs> yeah, um, I, I was thinking about how, uh, and, um, and, and I, I realized, okay, I'm feeling about that, feeling bad about that. Yeah. But wait a minute. I didn't ask myself, would I want to go to their house now? Yeah. No, yeah. Yeah. no. And, and we, we think about what someone did to us, but we also have to think about what our own reaction is. And I've always, I, I mean, this is just one of the things that I probably have repeated nonstop throughout my career to people is that you give the scorecard to yourself first. If you're passing out the scorecard to everyone else and waiting for them to judge you, then you are on an emotional roller coaster. It could be something as simple as, oh, Steve, I really like that tie. You know, it's red, white, and blue. That's great. And someone else could say, oh, you know, that blue, those two blues don't really match. You shouldn't wear that. You know, so one, you're going to feel good. And another, you're going to feel like, oh, I made a mistake the way I dress. And, and I just give that kind of as a basic example. Yeah. But that's what happens when we pass out those scorecards. It is okay to pass it out, but give yourself your own scorecard so you know where you stand. And then somebody could be giving you some very constructive criticism, and then you would be open and not defensive versus if you don't give yourself a scorecard and you're in the, well, I'm waiting for approval. I want to know what they think. What are they going to tell me? You know, you're not, you're, it's a disservice to yourself. Yeah. So good. So good. Um, let's talk this final thing. You know, Trump, we had a clip. I don't know if we need to play it. We might, but where he's saying, uh, and that we talked about that a minute ago or a little while ago. And yet they took the first one and the second one he had already said they're not going to steal it again. And now we know in retrospect, he let him do it again because he needed more. I think they needed more evidence so they could lock more people up, honestly. Yes, that's they exactly needed, it. They needed a lot they had to what... identify the sources of the corruption. Yeah. And some people at the lower level didn't necessarily make a choice, but their boss was corrupt and their boss told them what to do and they needed the job. And so they ended up complying, but they're guilty by association. Yeah, yeah, boy, that's intense. Well, talk about, do you believe this time in 2024? I guess there's two things. One, do you For example, could someone bring a student ID instead of a driver's license, a passport, or a birth certificate, um, and things like that. But, yeah. um, so one, uh, when is this Nasara Jasara, whatever you want to call it, yeah. going to happen? Because then we know there is the quantum um, is in is in control. You yeah. know, it's that blockchain, and it's not dependent on Google or the internet. Um, so I'm looking for that. The second thing is that I am looking to see if 
the Supreme Court, which has been looking at three different cases related to uh, the, the Florida case and the Brunson brothers. The Brunson brothers, right. Uh, those three, um, will they come out? Usually the Supreme Court announces it in June. So will we get that just before summer? Well, what would yeah. happen? See, I, I, I try to encourage people, look at the variables. Yeah. Don't good. try to make assumptions. Don't think we're not going to have one. Uh, it, we don't know. Yeah. We don't know. And even, even the people that are in charge, they have a plan. They have their objectives. They're moving forward. But you have to deal with the reaction you get because you might have to counter something or you might get something you hadn't anticipated. And how will you continue to drive things forward? So for now, I think that we need to be cautiously optimistic, but it really is the swing states that we have to worry about. So it's easier to focus in on that. Oh, that's and, I, and I do, I do think there is the potential of the military guarding the the voting in or the national guard coming out and dealing with that that would be really um, good now it, uh, oh excuse me they they mentioned uh you mentioned nasara jasara n-e-s-a-r-a -E nasara which stands for national da -da 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 -da. And then Jassar is the international version of Nassar. Yeah. And that has to do with for anyone that's hearing this for the first time. What's that? It hasn't been implemented again in my language. I would call it in the same way that the the 50 year Jubilee was to Israel. It is a international Jubilee where debts, many debts are canceled. In, institutional debts are canceled. Mortgages are paid off. That sort of thing. Is that about your understanding? Uh, and yes. then we go into a quantum financial system that's been being worked on for years, which would be a system that would be kind of considered to be unhackable. They probably use either um, crypto type technology or something that's way beyond crypto. The blockchain. Quantum, the quantum, what'd you say? Oh, the yeah. blockchain, yeah. Blockchain. And that would make it unhackable. That's what you just referred to. So the, when Nassara is implemented, some people will have mortgages that you're paying right now. It'll be gone. Some student loans across the board will probably all be canceled, uh, but not personal loans wouldn't, you know, your your family and friends that have made you loans, they don't, those don't get canceled. But right. anything else you know about Nassara that you could say while you're... Um, I know that right now we are waiting for Iraq to, um, Iran to, no, Iraq. Yeah, Iraq, right, to reevaluate. The dinar, the Iraqi dinar, we are waiting for the reevaluation. There is still the negotiations that are going on with Hamas and Netanyahu, and that is holding some of it up. Okay, so it has to be there are certain requirement in that uh, that that required peace to be in the country before it could go. Is that kind of what you're? Um, when the reevaluation happens, it's not just the Iraqi dinar. Yeah. What the goal is is to really put it one to one. So one dinar is equal to one pound. One dollar is equal to one British pound. It's that, that is the goal there. Yeah. So there are still, and, and I, I just heard about this, so I can't speak about it really intelligently, but I can say that the negotiations have been taken care of, things have been put in place, but there are still different world leaders and issues going on that have to be resolved to kind of flip the switch on it. Okay, okay. 
Well, good. People will be hearing more and more of that. You know, so I saw, yeah, I saw some uh, Patriot channels. I know there's a guy that does talk about Nassar all the time. Doctor, someone put young something doctor. Someone, oh. I can't think of his name. Uh, he talks about it the most, but he's on Patriot channels. I don't know if he's on other things. Doctor Scott Young. I think it is. Uh, Dr. Scott Young. You can look at that on a Patreon. He he talks about Nassar a lot. Um, I didn't put up his link here because I, I this was impromptu, but you look at that up in, in Telegram. But well, anything else you want to hit before we close our time? Go ahead. Yes. Uh, the other thing that I want to hit on, because in my new role, I have been able to understand algorithms better in the sense of why are the Democrats or the liberals or the trolls so much more successful mm. in creating traction? And that is because if we respond to it, we don't like it, we're criticizing it, we're disagreeing with it, we're putting something in there. What the algorithm takes in its mind is that the original post it gives it added validity. So I have been suggesting to people that if you want to highlight something, don't necessarily respond. Take a screenshot of that particular post, then create your own post with that so that you are making a stand and make the algorithms work for you so that you can keep it positive. So if someone's attacking you, don't attack back. Don't because it will only convince the algorithm that it is right to be attacking you. Really? Really? Because algorithms learn basically from responses and repetition. And it's it's why it's why the algorithms block the conservatives because the people that created those algorithms have a bias and that bias has been put in to the algorithm. So we really have to be careful about that and don't get, don't get into a spat, a tit for tat. Um, but it doesn't mean you can't respond. Take a screenshot of that. And you know, it's like putting a picture in. And so yeah. you can make a stand, then you put the picture and then you're guiding the discussion. That's good. And, you know, that's so true about the algorithms like uh, chat GPT. Um, I realize you, Johnny Enlow and I were talking about it. And he says that it's it's not AI that's evil, but it's how it's used. And people that try to get it to prophesy better not do that. You're in trouble with God and man, you know, if you do that. Um, but anyway, I if you put something in there, like if someone went to chat GPT, I haven't done this, but I, I almost guarantee you, if you went there and said, what is Nasara? Tell me what that is. Chat GPT will tell you that is a conspiracy. I'm pretty sure this will happen. Yes. That's a yes. conspiracy that has no proof of ev evidence, blah, blah, blah. And they'll tell you that. And you'll go, oh, then that means Dr. Jan and Steve don't know what they're talking about because AI said it's not true. That's because it's programmed in to tell you right. there's baloney. So look at the other things. And that's why you can hardly find anything because all of the CIA owned and controlled Google will tell you it's a it's a conspiracy. Bing will tell you it's a conspiracy. So just assume that you know going in that anything you look at is going to tell you it's a conspiracy unless you go to a source that will that will describe it to you. And I'm telling you one of those is Dr. Scott Young on Telegram. Look up that and Nasara, N-E-S-A-R-A, -E and you'll be much more educated. But don't don't expect Google to give you the truth. Well, and if someone tells you that's a conspiracy theory, how many so-called conspiracy theories have proved to be valid? Almost all and, of them. And, right. And the reason uh, my friend that I can't go to her house anymore. But, um, but I wanted to tell her something that my brother said, and she cut me off. And she said, but you said he's a conspiracy theorist. I don't want to hear it. Well, wait a minute. I wasn't even going to give you something like that. I was going to give you a completely different point. But 
people jump and they do that and they put the walls up yeah. and and it is an easy way to negate because it's foreign it's scary and one one of the main reasons that people fear donald trump is he's shaking up the status quo yeah that's his anointed gift from straight from god himself to, he's anointed to be a bull in a china closet. God loves that about him because he put it in, and I'm sure Trump loves it about himself. He loves to shake things up, you know. And he's yep. that guy that said, I, "I always looked forward to going bankrupt because then the first time because then I could find out who my real friends are." That's how he thinks. That's his DNA. I, exactly. I want to go through some bad times so I can learn more about who the good guys are and the bad guys. And it's a totally it's the most efficient way to know who's on your side and who's not on your side and who's good and who's bad is go through some tough times with them. You'll then you'll learn, right? Exactly. Exactly. So good stuff. Well, Dr. Jan, I appreciate this so much. Do we have your website anywhere or, or anything? Tell what uh, I, there's one. Dr. Jan.substack.com. Okay. Uh, that's where my articles are. And I'm at biz underscore shrink on x and i'm real dr jan on truth okay excellent stuff we appreciate that so much dr jan god bless you it's great today really important stuff you all look up nasara but don't don't let google tell you it's a conspiracy theory unless you want to laugh at them then they can so all yeah. right okay have, thank thank awesome. you so much dr jan god oh, bless thank you, everyone. you. I, my, I love being with you. Well, the, the feelings are mutual too, Dr. Jan. So a uh, quick reminder, everybody, Donna Rigney will be with, us, be with us in the morning at 11 Pacific. Have a great day, everybody. See you later. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.